I enjoyed this movie. Who I, I enjoyed this movie. But uh, my channel is Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss the newly released Judas and the Black Messiah it's directed by Shaka I think that's how I say Shaka King <laughs> hope that's right and it stars David Coulier and Lakeith Stanfield before I get into what I absolutely loved and adored about this film and some things I just I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm going to give you guys a second to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss all things ho ass niggas. Ho ass subscribe to see more of me let's get into this movie before we get there I was waiting on this movie but I was a little biased about David Coulier portraying Fred Hampton I know exactly who Fred Hampton is I you know read up on him I know his history I know everything that happened with him as far as a Black Panther and what he needed, you know, to be portrayed as. This is a very influential man in the black community, especially at that time in the way that he died. It was really horrific. So you needed, you know, someone with those chops to portray him. Not saying that he did, he did a very good job, but I do have those biases with an actor, a Brit, portraying this man, just like I did with the um, young lady who portrayed Harriet Tubman. Uh, the Brits make it very clear that their racial history is not what ours is. So they can't always connect and identify. Or we have, you know, David Coulier saying, you know, things like to the liking of, you know, I don't really see color. I don't want to be the black actor, David Coulier. I just want to be an actor. I don't want, you know, the race or all of these things on my back with every single, you know, part that I play and role that I decide to take. Understandable. But, you know, saying things, you know, like, I don't care to discuss race. It's old. I'm over it. Why are we still talking about it? I just don't understand why take this role. Fred Hampton is race. Fred, all these things that you don't care to discuss. But be that as it may, he took the role anyway. Now, this movie was about William O'Neill a black man who becomes an FBI informant and is supposed to infiltrate the Black Panthers and report back not only about the Black Panthers activity but mostly about Fred Hampton. He is the target. Now Fred Hampton was an activist, a revolutionary. He wanted change you know through teaching, through education, you know funding. He was a very very powerful young guy. Just to think that this man died and did all these things by the age of 21, like joining the NAACP, the Black Panther, speaking out about violence. This was a very strong, opinionated man who was assassinated in a really brutal way. And I really wanted his story to be told because he is very influential, but he may not be known as well as Bobby Seale or uh, Huey P. Newton and many others who were, you know, founders of the Black Panthers. Now, as soon as the movies start, we are not starting with Fran Hampton right away. We are starting with William O'Neill, who is impersonating an agent to be a car thief and, you know, take cars and is called and attacked and all these things. One thing I can say with this movie, we got a lot of William O'Neill. I wasn't expecting that. I, um, now I do see that the title is, you know, Judas Ann, but... I just thought that majority of this would be a Fred Hampton story. I just uh, 
we got a lot of time with him but with that being said i did like the fact that we got so much time with him and it really made us understand where he was coming from and how the two were absolutely separate as far as morals and their mindset to be the same age speaking of age I was a little taken back with Lakeith and David Coulier portraying these young men, William O'Neill and uh, Fred Hampton, who were both, you know, at those, you know, times from um, when he infiltrated, which is 1966 to 1969, when he was, you know, assassinated. These men are, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. So it's just like, so where? Where, <laughs> where is either one of these men looking 17, like teenagers? It just, I was just, you know, kind of taken back with that. But, you know, I get it from an acting st standpoint. These men did a phenomenal job and you're not going to find, you know, too many who can portray or convey what you need to on screen. But that just took me back because these men are, you know, every bit, you know, of 35 to, you know, later 30s. I was like, okay. Now, with us spending so much time, especially in the beginning with William O'Neill, I love, you know, you knock the head off. Hey man, that's a kid. Ain't no damn kid. <laughs> but I love the conversation that he has in the beginning with the FBI agent. And, you know, it's very symbolic of, you know, um, you know, why the badge? Why, why don't you have a gun like any other car thief? And it's like, you know, I can do more damage with this badge than I could ever do with a gun. Everybody has a gun, which is, you know, really, really symbolic of a lot of other stuff. But um, also like, you know, the questions he asked him, you know, like, do you relate to Martin or Malcolm just to see where his mindset of, and you know, to see that, you know, I have my guy, I have my mole. He gives two about any movement, perfect. Um, they did some work on Martin Sheen. Did I was like, damn Martin Sheen, <laughs> you really giving J. Edgar Hoover. He only had, you know, a small amount of screen time, but the makeup on Martin Sheen was, you know, wonderful. But you see immediately in the beginning that there's, you know, a link in the chain effect of, you know, everything trickling down, you know, J. Edgar Hoover puts, you know, the smack down on the FBI agent and he in turns put the smack down on the black man. Now, once he is, um, you know, about to be, you know, arrested and, you know, he lets him know, you know, you can do this or you can go home. You can get these, you know, these five years and uh, 18 months, you know, for this car theft and impersonating an officer, or you could do this. And you just know, especially now, what the um, Black Panthers were. And because it was, you know, many chapters, but this Chicago chapter, all of them in general, what they were and what Fred, Ham Fred Hampton was. And to jeopardize that for five years and 18 it was just like man you just see how separate these men were it was it was really great to see here I loved it and once we get further into the movie you know after we leave it was really hard for me to watch Lakeith try to portray a 17 year old here like it was, was like because it's you know it becomes a little disjointed because you're looking at an older man and it's like oh my god he's so naive he's you know 17 he's you know willing to just this is a kid it's hard to forget that this is a kid, especially when you see it portrayed as Lakeith. <laughs> but um, as we get into Fred Hampton and we get into, you know, David Coulier's performance in those wonderful speeches that he gave, like a lot of the screen time we get with Fred Hampton is through his speeches and they are fabulous. Everything is just so uplifting and empowering and motivated and still seem like stuff that needs to be said today is just <sighs> to hear all those things coming out of his mouth as you know an 18 year old like where <sighs> the teaching the speeches the recruiting we're, we're not we're never going to see that again we are never going to see that again and it's so disheartening like it, it was so good but in the midst you know of the speeches we see well what we well, if you're familiar with him you know that you know this is his wife and you know the interaction between them we're going to get into that i thought it was so adorable and i really wanted more of that but we get more into you know william o'neill infiltrating and you know reporting back and what do you see here and each each time you see that um how intact he was with the Panthers because the Panthers weren't, we weren't taking no mess. We were, you know, checking all boxes. If you look like you could be anything other than a black man trying his best to be a Panther and be a part of this team, you were, you were aced. 
So to see him go through the process, you know, the classes, the teaching, like the te this man was teaching. He was teaching, like just to see the, the, the teaching and the classes and the full program and the things that they were doing in the community. Each time you see William O'Neill's character report back to this FBI agent, it's just like, how? 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 Why, brother? Why? And then, you know, we get further into the gangs, them, you know, going to <laughs> him being bold, you know, having to go back to the pool wall like you didn't just try to steal a car. But we get more into those things and him, you know, really putting on that front, trying to, you know, defend him, getting the car and things like that. And just feeding into everything that this FBI agent is telling him that he also believes himself because of a likeness of a J. Edgar Hoover are spewing these things at him. They're the enemy equating the Black Panthers to the KKK. Where? Where? If you ever like get into, because I went through that whole phase of trying to, you know, take up and learn things you know things that we aren't taught in books and in school about our history if you ever get into learning about the black panthers and some of the things they were doing at that time in their communities it's just mind-blowing to think that anybody would equate them to a kkk all they saw were a black man with guns weaponized oh it's the enemy just because they had guns but it's like we are doing all these things in the community we are about you know empowerment and improvement fight against the pigs but I'm also about protecting myself. What you're not gonna do is knock me upside my head. What you're not gonna do is, you know, arrest me for no reason. You're not gonna harass me. I have rights, I'm a black person, this is my neighborhood. I have the right to defend myself. <sighs> All the black unity on screen was beautiful, even with the gangs, like, just to see all of them, you know, dressed in black and the unity, the togetherness. <sighs> We're not seeing this no more. We're not seeing this anymore. We see very much, you know, the the crabs in a barrel mentality now. It was not then. And to see this 21-year-old Fred Hampton put everything on the line, even his life, for his people. <sighs> now, even with all this beautiful blackness going on in, you know, the Black Panther movement, as well as them, you know, trying to promote change amongst other groups, you know, other races, rednecks, uh, all kind, you know, we see it was it was no bias there. They were coming, you know, after Malcolm was assassinated and kind of picking up a little bit where Malcolm left off of, you know, being in the nation of Islam and no, this is not going to be, um, you know, just a black movement. We can include others. We are, you know, stronger together than apart. It was about, you know, inclusion, and we see him doing that and just all these beautiful things and all this this love on screen and all this protection all this you know hey come on that food if, I, if we take a shot every time david kuye say food program come on feed the babies we would have been drunk like i love <laughs> i love getting to that accent david kuye was you know slaying me trying to find his medium between you know the um fred hampton 60s slang strong black accent and also trying to conceal his, you know, English, Brit accent. Just, Come on down, brother, food program. <laughs> it was good, but at some times it was like, David, you putting a whole lot on it. But you see Fred Hampton teaching, creating change, being on William O'Neill's ass. This was not an easy process. And yet you see him go back and be treated, you know, to money to you know all these bribes cigars you know welcome to scotch you're welcome in my home being treated you know with the utmost respect by this agent who wants nothing from him but to incriminate this man and he is reveling in it and once you you know kind of try to identify with him a little bit because you know he's you know he really didn't have a choice you know he could he could have um you know did this and maybe he's going to you know something but you see him uh kind of lean in when he's on that couch and go you know how much money do you make how how can i get me some of that it just shows you how you would think two brothers are one in the same and they couldn't be further apart as far as their morals, their dignity, their beliefs. William O'Neill and Fred Hampton were like ages apart and it was 
it was so sad like come on dude why but we get into you know that great meeting you know with the crowns with their berets the crowns and just to see how passionate all armed everybody black and armed hoorah <laughs> we get into that and we just see um how passionate they were just about you know i protect going back and forth about who's really protecting the black community who's trying to no it don't even matter but we get into that and we finally see you know a little bit of william o'neill's past catch up with him and we see you know him kind of be noticed and the way that those panthers kind of you know yeah get in the car that female panther who is portraying the female panther in this movie with her knife and her boot and her gun it was beautiful often when you see the panthers portrayed in any light a lot of the times the women are forgotten now of course we did get the black panther movement and the black panther movement <laughs> the black panthers movie you know mostly about you know bobby seal and huey p newton and we did get you know those scenes with the women but here just here the look of the movie the cinematography the way that the women were shot in the man and it didn't look hollywood in the um I didn't really see very much makeup. I didn't really see, you know, clean lines. Everybody just looked real black. I loved it. And Shaka King is, you know, the producer, the writer, the director. You can tell that a lot of passion and love were put into this movie for these men and women to portray a certain way and for it to be authentic, which is great. But um, you see them, you know, start to, you know, question him. You're already being questioned anyway. There was, you know, such a... Um, I uh, for we have to look out for these moles the informants they are trying to take us down so if you were a new panther you were instantly getting the side eye and you see that he has a rebuttal he has he was bold he was ready I was with the FBI agent you are like one of the best actors I've ever seen because you can't tell me that you aren't really engrossed in this movement but for every situation he is queued up with an answer of what to do but all you also see his separate side of him, you know, feeling the guilt, feeling down, feeling, you know, at any moment I can be caught and my life is in jeopardy. But yet we're continuing to revel in it, to take money, to lie, to, you know, go back and share information. <sighs> Whoop his ass. Now, outside of spending so much time with William O'Neill, we get into, you know, Fred Hampton, a little bit of his background. I wish... I really wish we got more Fred Hampton here. I'm really curious, you know, to know more about him outside of, you know, a couple of documentaries I've seen, just some more history. I was hoping we get we would get more, you know, maybe into his family life and stuff like that, but you know, we didn't. But we did get a little inkling of, you know, him being, you know, with his wife when we know, you know, that was forbidding, you know, we don't fraternize with other Panthers, we treat them as equals. This is not that, you know, when he checked William O'Neill, but it was just something about his wife that, you know, drew them together. And it was just so beautiful to see them you know listening to Malcolm's speeches and finishing you know each other's sentences and all this conscious black love that was happening on screen oh. it was so warm and just so innocent and at the when it became you know so innocent and he was so shy and kind of didn't know how to approach her and really know how to talk that's when you know it kept queuing in my head these are not you know 30 40 somethings these are kids these are 17 18 19 year old teens <sighs> that's when that that age comes into play because if i was like what I, oh yeah but we get into you know more time going by and fred hampton being arrested for ice cream like still an ice cream okay <laughs> but once he is uh you know in prison William O'Neill takes a bigger role. He's, you know, over head of security. And he is just, it's like, how do you live this double life, dude? I I could never. And he gets, you know, so far in that it's hard to get out. And every time, you know, he wants to take a step back to say, okay, well, he's in jail. You guys got this. Am I done now? Can I walk away? It's like, you're never finished. You're never going to be finished. This is a never ending cycle. And you see them, you know, um, child. When he, you know, got arrested and they um bombed the uh the you know the Black Panthers, you know, their their office and he hits that, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna go upstairs, you know, I'm gonna um be up there on the roof and ran his whole ass off. I was like, you mother <laughs> Like I was like, ain't no ain't nobody gonna see him. Please somebody see him. Please some 
uh, you're just waiting. If you know the story, you know how this ends, but you're just waiting, which, you know, speaks to really great filmmaking. You're like, man, like, can somebody catch him? Is anybody going to see him? Y'all already got that side on him because he's, you know, at this point, they've made it clear that, you know, there's more than one informant. He was, you know, trying to report on someone who was already an informant and, you know, the boiling water and we tortured him. Oh, you tortured a regular panther who was doing what he was supposed to do and you were an informant and all this back and forth and him trying to create tension you know maybe it's you maybe who who who's the mole here it's not me he's trying to you know deflect and create distraction and he's going off and he's sweating and it's intense and then he's back and it's just like you ain't tired you're not tired of this you're not tired ah <sighs> You're not tired of this. You're going back. You're reporting. They're doing raids. Once you saw that, when once this man was in prison, which is what it was about, and even the FBI agent is starting to question some things. Oh, you already have a mole there. Oh, this person killed an innocent man. You're not going to do anything about it. And it, no, you are a part of something that is broken. And neither the agent or William O'Neill realized that they were just, you know, rolling. I'm going to do what, whatever I got to do. But, you know, even with us seeing them, you know, burn down headquarters and him being so distraught and like, oh, my God, like what? I can't do anything. I'm in jail. And those people banding together to rebuild. It was amazing. Even O'Neill was like, well, damn, they're going to come right back. It's burnt down. There's nothing we can do. He did everything he could possibly do along with the police to drop inklings of y'all just need to give up. And since they it was either give up or death. That's all we saw through the movies because they didn't give up on their beliefs and what they stood for and what they were trying to do in their community. It was death. There was nothing you could burn down, nobody you could arrest, nobody you could shoot to break their spirits and make them not want to fight for themselves anymore. Death. Now with that standoff and just seeing him on that roof and wanting to running away in just the way that Lakeith portrayed him and he did an awesome job. It's just something wicked about seeing betrayal from your own. That's like, it's, you know, easier to accept, you know, from different pathways, but to see your own, it just feels like it stings a whole lot more. But with me not feeling like we got enough Fred, I really wanted to, you know, get more into the poet, you know, his his girlfriend, get to see, you know, how she was really dealing with, you know, being pregnant. It was spoken on like really briefly and then it was over. She was just, you know, in her last trimester. I really wanted to know how she dealt with, you know, him being away for so long, you know, for months and months at a time and in prison, not really, you know, being able to get a letter from him all the time and, um, concealing her pregnancy until he got out of prison it's like we're not going to talk about that i would love to for you guys to embellish on you know some more of that i really wanted to get more into the intricate parts of the story and not i mean that's without saying the judas and the black messiah so this was really about the judas but i would have loved to hear a lot more about that and see this in this movie now we see J. Edgar Hoover put more pressure on the FBI agent. It's just like, I want him gone. I want him arrested. I want him this, I want him. And it's just, it never seems to be enough. So he's putting more and more pressure on William O'Neill. And this is when we get more into the um, other Panthers, you know, portrayed by a young man who looks 17, 18, 19 years old. Did y'all see the little dude from the new edition movie who played Ralph Transband? I was just waiting on him to sing, but he did, he did really great here. <laughs> And the other beautiful, you know, chocolate guy from um, Moonlight. They did really good. And it was it was such a, even the female panther, that was such a, a contrast for me. I'm like, they really look young, teenage, vibrant, fresh. And then you have 40-year-old Fred Hampton and <laughs> William O'Neill. <laughs> but they did really good here. And we get into, you know, the treatment of, you get into how bold, you know, the Panthers were. Like, we're not taking anything. And you see he saw our uh, Jimmy character saw, you know, some man being harassed. And it's, it turned into, you know, a shoot-off and him being a uh, captured hospital and pretty much murdered. Pretty much murdered. And his friend until, you know, being so distraught about it. Like, again, you're, you're taking another one of us. Someone knows something. But encountering black people who didn't want to be but I don't I don't want to be your brother I don't want to help I want to be safe I don't I don't want no parts of this being a panther was was dangerous as you can see from the movie there was 
I wish we got more, you know, with that standoff in that building. I'm like, can we get get some more of that? Like, how do we get to this point? I know how we got here, but I want it. I, the movie was so good that I wanted some more of it. Not saying that it, no, it wasn't enough. I wanted some more. I wanted some more. <laughs> but him, you know, any, you know, with the standoff with the, with police officers, cause the, uh, um, the janitor in the hospital where his friend was, you know, killed, um, wanted to know more information about it. And he, you know, called the police and you see him in that chase down in that moment where he thinks twice to go, Hey, you know, should I, um, I could run, but I I'm tired of running. At this point, you know, all of the Panthers are just tired of, you know, giving their all and not getting the results that they want to. Once he gets out and we get more into, you know, the wife pregnancy and that speech and uh, that poem that she gives, you know, to let him know, you know, there is no regret. I can't wait to have your black son. That was a great moment. I, I really love what she had to say. Um, and just every speech, every speech, David, Kouye, Fred, I mean, it was a Fred Hampton speak, well versed, very well spoken man, very pro black. Every speech here was really great. I really loved the moments. Now, the outside when he was just talking, it was a little hip hip. <laughs> but um, the speeches, the speeches were hitting. He did a phenomenal job with that. I love those moments when we do get into the life of a panther and you know, um, women's and women's. <laughs> girlfriends and wives who you know have to lead this lifestyle of you know my man is this activist this Malcolm this Martin this Fred Hampton this Huey P Newton this Bobby Seale what is their home life like what does this mean for their wife you know you could you're in you know in your tracks of you know forever thinking you know his life is in jeopardy and you know you see that in that moment where he says you know I see myself, you know, dying for this cause and she's taken back. Like we have other people to think of, but when you're so adamant about something for your community and that man, you don't really have a moment to think about yourself or your family because he was so much for the people, which was beautiful and also really disheartening at the same time because he, he could have been really, really, really great. Now, steady approaching, once he, you know, got out of jail and I seen how for a long she was in her pregnancy, I was like, oh, what we gonna do, you know, to run out this 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 screen time? We have an hour left in the movie. She's that far along in her pregnancy. It's not too long before he is murdered. But um, you see that the um, the FBI is trying to, you know, use any, any, any way to incriminate, imprison, do something to Fred Hampton as well as these Panthers. Like we're, we're looking for everything and starting to try to utilize um, William O'Neill a bit more. And this is when, you know, we come into the C4. I didn't know about this scene. I was like, this is a setup. How the hell you just pop up with some C4? <laughs> you know, we just gonna blow. Oh, I love Lakeith here because it's a combination of him portraying, you know, good acting at showing bad acting because it's like, Whoo, man, yeah, I would've threw ball and water on him. I would've kicked him in the nuts. I would've, yeah, whoo, huh. Yeah, man, we got C4. How we just be going to blow the shit up? Is this a cause or not? <laughs> it was so good at, you know, good acting portraying bad acting because William O'Neill is giving us very much bad acting trying to convince these, these men that he's a legit Black Panther and, you know, he's ready, you know, for the revolution. And he, you know, pulls that wire out and it's like, Okay. Once it's made very clear that J. Edgar Hoover is not after jail time, he never was after jail time. It was only about because you see William O'Neill having a deep sigh as well as the other FBI agents like, whoo, we got him. He's going back to prison. That's what we wanted, right? Like, no. Prison made Huey P. Newton, you know, uh, a superstar. It made this other Panther, uh, you know, acclaimed book writer. It gave him fame. Prison is not going to give me what I wanted. I want him dead. And once you see William O'Neill, you know, familiar with this and you see him break down, you know, after he's, he coming in all clean with his shades, honey, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't sit your infiltrating bitch ass down, <laughs> he, uh, Lakeith was so good here just to see him revel in, I mean, Fred uh, Hampton being portrayed here was all wonderful, but the star here was Lakeith. Outside of David Coulier, I really identify more as far as acting and who bodied the role. It was the Keith. But you um you see how broken he is to think that, you know, 
Y'all, uh, y'all, y'all not gonna kill him, right? What? What, 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 you, what you thought? <laughs> what you thought? And you know, once again, you see this agent using what he's done against him. Like you wouldn't want them to find out that you are a traitor. You're not actually a Black Panther. You're a rat. I would hate to see what they would do to you. And he's just like at his wit's end, but just not enough to go. I'm done with this. Like just, just get. You know how this ends, but you're sitting there waiting. Like, boy, just take the prison time. Just take the prison time. Just take the prison time. Once you get to the end and you see that he worked for the FBI agent and, you know, infiltrated and did all of this fuckery for more time than he would, is, would have spent in prison. But you see, uh, you see Laurel Howard acting his ass off, his pimp coat, you know, slide him that sleep agent, you know, as he's, you know, so broken, like, I'm like, in what world, even with it, you know, the first guy, did you really think that you were the only informant? <laughs> did you really think? And I just love, you know, L'Oreal, like, you know, we hide in plain sight. They're never going to suspect us. Them being so horrible to use their own, you know, you're not going to suspect your own people, but you're going to think that your own people are with you. But you see here with William O, you just don't understand. You see firsthand what the Panthers are about and what this man is about. And you still decide to pursue and take the sleep agent and contribute to murdering this man. If you haven't, I suggest that you go watch, you know, the Fred Hampton documentary as well as more documentaries and things about uh, William O'Neill and you get to really see where his headspace was. You just, you just don't get it. But we get to the part, you know, that I was waiting for and dreading all at the same time. I didn't know how, how they were going to film it or how it was going to be shot if we were really going to see him because you know he was shot at point blank range. He was assassinated. Um, and you see how nervous he is. Like he's just so taken, you know, slid in that damn badge back. You just see how broken William O'Neill is and you know how it ends, but you're just waiting. Like, you know how it ends in history, but you're waiting as an audience. Like, is he going to change his mind? Is he going to say something? Is he going to walk out? And I'm just sitting there like, oh, he's going to, you know, ask him if he wants a drink or he's going to, you know, take his drink or he's going to slide it in his drink. He's going to put some in his drink. Don't put it in his drink. He put it in the drink. <laughs> he put it in the drink and you see him and his wife you know they're expecting and he's you know about to go to jail he's about to go to prison and when you find out he's about to go to jail and it's nothing to him those five years that Fred Hampton was going to have to spend in jail were nothing when it came to his movement because you have people all in his ear you know we can you know you can run off here you can escape here we can give you money to go here we can hide you here you can be out of this town in no time and he's like no you guys are focusing on the wrong thing what you need to do is take this money and fund it to start our black hospital for care don't worry about me i'm gonna be fine i can do it's nothing i'll spend that time strategizing about what i want to do next and our next moves <sighs> And you just see William O'Neill over there shaking in his boots because he's about to contribute to murdering this man for those same five years. The parallels were ridiculous. But you, we finally get to the point and we see um, it play. I love how it was shot. Everything here was shot really, really accurate. I love that. But, you know, you see the police come in and I was I was just waiting for that. You know, he's good and dead now. And that damn, that mother, oh, he's good and dead now. I was like, oh, like I didn't know it was coming. It's like, oh, son, son of a bitch. <laughs> and you see, you know, the expression on his girlfriend's face. You know, she's pregnant. All the shooting, like, all the no fucks given in this, in this movie for black people in their lives. It's just like, why? But they had, you know, no respect for anybody's life and came in there with an, an agenda to murder him. And you uh, kind of feel compassionate for him at the fact that he was sleeping. But it's still bad in the other sense of you guys didn't even give him a chance to defend himself because he was sleeping. But we end with, you know, knowing more, you know, about the Black Panthers and the continuation and, you know, the um, depletion of that as well as, you know, Fred Hampton as much as he's respected and what his wife, you know, went on to do outside of, you know, him being murdered, his son, as well as um, William O'Neill, 
continuing to work for the uh, FBI until later he committed um, suicide in uh, 1990. The movie was well shot. I should have known with the opening shot of uh, William O'Neill, Judas, Lakeith Stanfield that this was not a Fred Hampton movie. Though it, it was, but it wasn't. I wanted more. We got a whole lot. I got more than I ever needed to know about how William O'Neill felt about what he was doing in his inner demons. That was fine. We got all of him. I completely, Fred Hampton, I wanted more. But um, let me know what you guys thought about the film. Drop down and tell me, you know, if I missed anything. Because I always feel like I missed stuff. But um let me know if you how you felt about the accurate accuracy. Let me know how you felt about, you know, Fred Hampton being portrayed by David, David Coulier. Let me know what you think. If you think my review sucks, write that down. I like that too. <laughs> I see you guys next time. Bye.